When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. Where they had rowed three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. When they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And let us pray. Jesus, thank you that you meet us in the storms of life, but don't leave us there, but take us out of the storms into living with you. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, that's quite a gospel lesson this morning, isn't it? About Jesus walking on the water. It came right after he had fed the 5,000. And uh, there was something that I had received this week from Anita's brother's friend. Y'all remember Bill Strickland that preached here when we were in the hospital? Well, his friend Jim has a blog, and he did a blog on tact, T-A-C-T. He said there's a huge difference in telling it like it is and telling it the way people hear you and respond positively. The difference is called tact. The New Testament describes it as speaking the truth in love. Several have spoken about tact down through the ages. As economist Ann Landers used to say, they don't use a sledgehammer when a fly swatter will do the job. <laughs> Isaac Newton described tact as the art of making a point without making an enemy. Winston Churchill said, The tact is the ability to tell someone to go to hell in such a way that they look forward to the trip. <laughs> well, I'm hoping I'm going to be tactful this morning in what I have to say because we're going to be dealing with fear. One of the oldest emotions that we all have that Susan referred to earlier with the children in this passage of Scripture where Jesus said, it is I, don't be afraid. Now, how does that relate to us today? I may have shared before about Dr. Claude Thompson, who was my professor of systematic theology at Emory University Candler School of Theology. I had him for a course, but the last semester he was there, he announced this was his final course to teach because he was dying. And Dr. Thompson taught a course on death and dying. Well, needless to say, we had to move to the auditorium for all the students to hear what Dr. Thompson had to say. He was a man who had studied theology, the study of God, all his life was teaching, preaching, and now we're going to find out what it's really all about. Well, as he taught the course, what really impressed me the most was the peace and the calm that he had. He was very much at ease about who he was, whose he was, and where he was going. I remember the last time that he preached a sermon in the chapel. It was packed. And Dr. Claude Thompson said, this will be my last time to preach in this chapel but I want you to know it will not be my last time to have a spiritual experience. And what he was referring to was his passing from life through death to life eternal. Now death can be one of those things that we are afraid of. We look at the disciples this morning. And here they were out on these rough waters. There on the Sea of Galilee the wind would come down from the mountains and go across the water and, and rough the water up. And then here comes Jesus walking on the water. And they were terrified. They were scared to death. When Jesus said, it is I, don't be afraid. Now in the Greek New Testament there's a word for the fear of water. It's Thessalophobia. Phobia, fear of Thessala, the sea. And that's what they were. And we've seen that many times in the Old Testament 
where people were afraid. For example, take Noah and the ark. Now we know Noah built the ark out of cypress wood so that it would float. But the time came for the water to rise. And I would have thought, well, maybe it's just a kind of calm, kind of a sea they were bobbing around on. It wasn't at all. It was, it was turbulent. It was chaotic. And the winds would howl and blow the ark back and forth. And it must have been times when Noah and his family wondered, where is God in all of this? They could have experienced fear in the midst of that ark. But God was there, and God brought them through like he'll bring you through the fear, the coast, and all the experience in life. Remember the Israelites there in Egypt. They were trying to escape the Egyptians. And as they were going toward the Sea of Galilee, it was like going up to a brick wall, and they wondered, how are we going to get through this Sea of Galilee? And we know what happened. God used Moses, and he parted the waters, and the Israelites crossed on dry land. But when the Egyptians got there, we know they were drowned because the waters came back together again. Sometimes we may feel like that, feel like we've come up against a wall, and in our life we're not sure where to go, what to do next. And that's when we pray, and the Lord parts the waters in our life and allows us to cross over on dry land. Later, 40 years later, they would cross the River Jordan into the Promised Land. Look at the story of Jonah. He was a man who was called by God to go and preach to the Ninevites in Nineveh. But they were his enemies. And Jonah didn't want to do what God wanted him to do. Have you ever done that? Well, that's what Jonah tried to do. And so he went down to Joppa and did not catch a ship, a sheep, a ship, <laughs> not a sheep, but a ship, to uh, the place that he was supposed to go, but instead he went to Tarshish. And out in the Mediterranean Sea, a storm came up. And in this storm, they decided to throw Jonah overboard. And as the story goes, he was swallowed by a large fish. And it was in the belly of the fish that he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord answered his prayer, and he ended up on the shore and went from there to Nineveh to preach to the Ninevites to repent. And they did. Now we know there's more to that story. But right now I just want us to deal with the different kind of fears that we can experience in life. I don't know how many of you have ever been through a hurricane. Okay, Henry has. And I bet you have too, And if he did. Remember when we were in Corpus Christi. The first time there was a hurricane there, we stayed. Big mistake. The winds and the water did not come down. It came this way, under the door, and we would put our own towels and sheets and anything we could put under the door to keep the water from rushing in. The fear in a hurricane was real. But sometimes our fears are not real. Sometimes they're nightmares. Sometimes we need to realize that God is there, whatever kind of problems we're having, and that Jesus is with us in these problems. Because there's two things I've learned in studying the Scripture this past week. One is that Jesus provides. He will do for us what we need Him to do. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., of course, was an African-American, and he was familiar with what was called lament. Lament in the African-American tradition is supposedly where you mourn and, and groan about what's going on in your life. And he was sharing with the Lord that he didn't feel capable. He didn't feel like he was able to lead the people like he should lead them. And he was afraid. And he had a lament on Wednesday morning, April the 3rd, 1968 there in Memphis, Tennessee. And that night, this is what he wrote. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter to me now because I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know that tonight, we as a people, 
will get to the promised land. Now what we know is less than 24 hours later, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated by James Earl Ray. We don't always get what we want, but look at the difference that is made in our life and our world because of Martin Luther King. He was assassinated, a martyr. But what a difference it made because he prayed when he was in his fear. And God answered his prayer even though it cost him his life. The other thing that I have learned in the midst of these kind of waters is the peace that God has for us. Jim Salter was a pilot. And two times he had a problem. Once when he was a pilot in the military and another time when he was a commercial pilot. The problem wasn't with the enemy. It was in the plane. It was a hydraulic problem. And this caused the plane to almost crash both times. And so <laughs> he shared how marvelous he felt that at that time when he thought his life was coming to an end, that he had peace and calm and he wasn't afraid. See, that's the goal of a Christian like Jim Salter, to be able to know that we are in his hands, that we can experience that peace that surpasses all understanding. Matter of fact, Jesus said it there in John 14, 27, when he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give unto you, Therefore, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. That happens when we allow the Prince of Peace to come into our life. Well, this morning, I'm aware that studying the Greek New Testament, what Jesus said was not, it is I, be not afraid. The actual phrase he said was, I am, be not afraid. I am, be not afraid. Referring back to the Old Testament, to Exodus 3.14, remember when Moses asked God, what is your name? And God said, I am that I am. Jesus was referring to the fact that it was God through him that was doing what he was doing and is doing today. When we lean on God through Jesus Christ, we have the power of God that's in us and for us. Now, that may be hard to do, but it's important for us to realize that's why we're Christians, that we might have that peace that surpasses all understanding. There was a young preacher who went to his first church out into a rural area where there were farmers, and every Sunday morning, one particular poor farmer would pray, God, prop us up on our leaning side. Prop us up on our leaning side. And the young preacher wondered, what's that all about? And he asked this poor farmer, what do you mean? And he said, well, my farm is very poor, and my barn almost fell down. And I brought that to the church, and I told the parishioners that my barn was just about to fall down. And you know what they did? They answered my prayer. They came out, and they propped up my farm. So it wouldn't fall over. And since then I've been praying, O oh Lord, prop us up on our linging side. Prop us up on our linging side. That whenever we're fearful or afraid, God will prop us up. And we'll go on one way or another. First John 4 tells us that God is love. And there's no fear in love. There's no fear in God, but His perfect love casts out fear. So we need not be afraid. It begins when we hear Jesus say, Don't be afraid. It ends when we hear Him say, For I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let's thank God for that. Let's pray. Jesus, may we hear you say to us, It is I. Don't be afraid. It is I. 